Hi there. Um, I noticed recently in the September 2020 issue of Sound on Sound magazine um, that there was a, an article on modular interfacing. Um, so that's how you can connect your audio interface to your Eurorack or other modular synth CV control voltage. Now, I wondered whether I could do it with my interface, so I've tried it out, and I have, and I'm gonna show you the results today. Um, so it's just important to know a couple of things about your interface um, before you um, start this. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you on my desktop over here, um, I've got this uh, Sound on Sound article. This is the one in question, modular interfacing. Um, I really recommend having a look at that um, and having a read. It is currently free. Um, because of the, the helpful people at Sound on Sound and how they've given this away uh, during lockdown. Um, fundamentally, this is my sound card and I went and found um, the specifications for it. Um, it's an RME Fireface 802. Uh, here is the maximum output level, um, it's, which is plus 16.8 dBU. So I found a DBU to DBV converter. I'm going to actually put in 16.8 in here and hit calculate. And what I can see is that 16.8 DBU uh, equates to uh, a 5.358, etc. volts. So as Eurorack is uh, five volt in its control, I've worked out that my interface is capable of running uh, Euro, uh, at Euro rack level. It, the other thing which is important about your interface is that it needs to be DC coupled. It cannot be AC coupled. So in the article, they talk about various manufacturers, uh, RME, Universal Audio, Native Instruments, Apogee and PreSonus, who've all committed to uh, making their all, uh, and Motu as well there, it mentions about um, making um, their, their outputs DC coupled and sometimes their inputs as well, which means you can also run control voltage into your sound card to control uh, Ableton or other DAWs as well. So let's have a look at Ableton. Okay, so I've got a little Ableton jam that I've been working on here, very rough, but just the starting point of a track sounds a bit like this. Okay, so it's got beats, bass, and um, a synth, and some little vocal sample things that I've been playing around with. Um, at this point, I might think, oh, I'd like to use a little, do a little arpeggio, so I'll probably do that from my Eurorack setup to get away from the computer and to do something a bit more fun and have a little jam. So, let's switch over to the camera up the, uh, and have a little look at the Eurorack stuff. Um, and I've, actually, I have already had a little play around, so I've patched the, uh, the, uh, the BeatStep Pro, into the Moog here, my little Moog uh, Mother 32, um, and this is controlling that. So I have a little sequence. That I was playing around with. Um, but it sounds a bit boring. So the next thing would probably be to start to add some movement and modulation to that. Let's say I want to add some modulation which is synchronized to Ableton. And um, for example as well, I have a few different LFO things that I can d reach for here, but really the majority of these things are kind of either too random or too uh, unpredictable to be able to use, um, as, you know, to, get, to give me a solid idea. The LFO built into the Moog itself is simply either a, um, a triangle or a square wave, so that doesn't give you a lot of choice there. Um, I'm already using the LFO here to modulate the, um, the, the VCO modulation, so the oscillator modulation, the pulse width, pulse width modulation. Um, so yeah, I'm, 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 that's already being used. So what if I want to add an extra um, uh, filter modulation to this. Well, this is where the CV for live can come in. So if I switch back to my desktop here, you can see um, that I've added here a CV control track, um, and this has a CV shaper on it. Now this is within the Max um, CV tools, so you have to have Max for live in order to make this work. But this is very much like the shaper, um, which is a standard Max device. Um, so it's under Max Audio Effects. Um, you have the, the Shaper. 
here. Um, the shaper is designed for you to map directly to uh, a function in Ableton. So mapping to there, for example, and that allows you to make a different LFO um, shape effectively, which makes it more versatile than the LFO tool, which you'll also find in this list um, here, LFO. So the, uh, the, different, um, the difference with the shaper is that you can create your own waveform. And the CV shaper is no different, but the CV shaper allows you to do this uh, with a CV output. So if your uh, sound card is capable of doing this, um, as I described earlier in the, in the video, um, you've got this um, uh, ability to route CV to your external output of your sound card um, and pick the output. I'm using this one uh, for, the, for today. Um, and this appears, this output will appear um, on my mini jack here and this is just coming straight out of the physical output of the sound card um, with a just a cheap simple cable um, and this will allow me to use that routing from Ableton um, uh, into my synth so I'm going to actually patch that into the cutoff here uh, and I'm going to hit go on Ableton um, I've now synchronized the beat step over USB to Ableton, so now you can hear the two together. Okay, much more interesting already. Um, let me just switch back across to Ableton here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've actually got the modular coming in here as a live input. That's how you can hear it into the video feed that you're listening to right now. Um, so I'm going to just have a tweak of that, but what I'm gonna do is just solo the modular. So you can just hear that, and I'm gonna tweak this um, LFO uh, a little bit, just so you get a feel for what you can achieve with the Ableton LFO, the CV Shaper. So there you go. So it's uh, it's quite uh, very flexible, and it gives me a lot more control. Some of these things can be automated as well. Um, so I could or I could have multiple different CV shapers, which I'm changing at certain points in the song. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot that you can achieve with this, um, uh, and uh, and in synchronizing the LFO rate to your sequence as well, which is not easy to do unless you've got some dedicated hardware. So. I hope this video has been useful to you and um, please any questions or comments add them in the comments section below check out the description field for my patreon link and for my website sign up to my mailing list and i'll let you know when more of these videos come along big up see you next time peace <laughs>